Hi, Chris with RC Worst here, and today I'm gonna to walk you through selecting an effluent pump. When shopping for an effluent pump, it's easy to get overwhelmed by the wide range of prices and seemingly endless number of options. In this video, I hope to help you cut through the competition and find the right pump for your application. When shopping for a replacement pump, many people often replace their pump with the exact make and model that was there before. In a lot of cases, that's okay to do, but to determine if that's the right move for you, consider how long the pump lasted as well as how much the replacement pump will cost you. I'll include a link in the description to an article I wrote a while back about how long your pump should last as a reference. So what if the pump is no longer available or is discontinued at the time that you need it? Well, the best option, of course, is to pick up the phone and call me, but for all you do-it-yourselfers out there and anyone wanting to know what's going on behind the curtain, here we go. The first step to selecting a pump is to familiarize yourself with the ins and outs of the application. The minimum information you will need to know to make an informed decision. First, we ask ourselves, what is the source of the affluent? And uh, when, when speaking of the source, we're wanting to know is this septic affluent? Is this effluent going to be screened or filtered in any way? Um, and we of course have to select a pump based on that information. And uh, you also have to consider, is there a chance the pump could come in contact with anything that may damage the pump, such as solids, fats, greasives, and abrasives? most common in any commercial uh, application. Another thing to consider is how frequently does the pump need to operate and for how long? And finally, you're going to need to know what the system head requirements are based on the required flow. Now, if you're not familiar with pump head, check out the video in the description below for a simple explanation of how to calculate this. Once you've familiarized yourself with the application, it's time to go shopping for a pump. Our goal here is of course to find the right pump for the job. A pump that is best suited for your specific application. Pumps are not one size fits all. So let's talk a moment about what it means to find the right pump for the job. The right pump for the job will offer a balance of upfront costs as well as long-term costs over the life cycle of the pump. This includes maintenance and repair. In general, a more expensive pump should translate to the owner as less problems during the life of the pump, as well as costing less during operation and maintenance. A higher price pump does not necessarily imply that it is a better pump and a little bit of research and understanding goes a long way in this process. The right pump for the job should optimize energy efficiency by balancing energy consumption with reliability. The right pump for the job should maximize the overall life of the pump, increasing the time between replacements. So let's take a look at some pumps and discuss the various features that stand out so that you can gain a better understanding of what to look for. So we'll begin today by looking at the MES series. This is a Myers pump and this is a all uh, cast iron construction. It's a class 30 cast iron uh, pump here. This pump features a semi-open non-clog impeller, which is gonna translate to less probability of getting clogged or plugged when the occasional solid does enter the pump. Uh, this pump also has a thermoplastic impeller, which is nice for an efficient operation because a thermoplastic impeller is generally gonna be lighter and also a little bit more flexible than the cast iron or bronze impellers that, um, that are the alternative. The maximum head of the MES series is upwards of approximately 90 feet and the maximum capacity is about 88 gallons per minute. The preferred operating range of this pump, the MES 50, half horsepower, is somewhere between 32 and 50 feet of head. The discharge size on this pump is two inch NPT and it has a maximum solids handling capability of three quarter inch. The motor speed is a 3450 RPM motor which features upper and lower ball bearings for 
maximum life. This particular pump features a carbon ceramic seal and it is a type 21 mechanical seal. So it is recommended to be used specifically in effluent applications and not in your utility dewatering application. You would wanna find a somewhat harder seal when doing dewatering due to the possibility of abrasives and sediment in the fluid pump. The MES series is available in one half horsepower through one horsepower and is offered as a standard in 20 foot cord lengths, though 30 foot cord lengths and longer are available. There are a variety of configurations that the MES series pumps are offered in, both automatic and manual configurations. Automatic configurations coming with a wide angle piggyback float switch and the manual configurations coming with no switch. This particular series has a maximum liquid temperature rating of 140 degrees Fahrenheit. The next pump on our list is the Myers ME OSP series. Now this pump is pretty unique and features a cast iron and or is offered in a naval bronze configuration for the body construction itself. The naval bronze configuration is a little bit more expensive and a little bit more special purpose. The, uh, the impeller on this pump is an open vein vortex type impeller. The open vein vortex style impeller featured on this pump is going to offer maximum resistance to sediment and solids found in the fluid pumped just because the vortex impeller is a greater distance away from the fluid as it enters. So it decreases the chance that the material is going to come in contact with the pump. The OSP50 pump, though available in cast iron as well as a naval bronze, can actually be purchased with a thermoplastic impeller or bronze impeller. And the cast iron configuration, you can order a naval bronze or thermoplastic impeller. The naval bronze body construction only comes with the bronze impeller. Uh, the maximum head on this pump is roughly 25 feet and the maximum capacity is about 60 gallons per minute. I would say that the preferred operating range on this pump is between about 10 to 21 feet. The discharge size, as you can see on this pump, is inch and a half uh, with the special bushing here, or PVC bushing, not real special, uh, or a standard two inch NPT discharge is offered on the pump. The maximum solids handling of the OSP 50 series is 5 eighths of an inch, so pretty well rated for the occasional solid does, that does enter the pump, and that is in part due to the Vortex impeller. Uh, this pump does have a 1750 RPM speed motor. This pump's motor features upper and lower single row ball bearing construction, and this pump offers a carbon ceramic type 21 mechanical seal. This pump is only available in half horsepower and is offered in standard cord lengths of 10 feet or 20 feet, but longer lengths are available. The ME OSP 50 series pump is offered in both automatic and manual configurations. The automatic configurations feature a diaphragm type pressure switch. The manual configurations are offered with no switch. This particular pump has a maximum liquids temperature rating of 140 degrees Fahrenheit. One thing that is notable about the ME OSP 50 series pump is that it is rated for continuous duty operation, contrary to the other two pumps that I have here in front of me. The exception being this, uh, this high head effluent pump that we have here. This one is also rated for continuous duty operation. But it is important to note that, that it's rated for continuous duty operation because in some applications that can certainly be important when the run times can be very long. Up next, we have the MESPD series pumps. The MESPD series pumps also feature a class 30 cast iron constructed body. They feature a two vein semi open impeller configuration for decent solids handling capability. The impeller construction on this pump is actually a cast iron construction. I would say that this particular pump is quite a stout pump. You can see that it has uh, plenty of stainless steel hardware, stainless steel handle, um, and this particular pump has an upgradable flange. The discharge is standard at two inches, 
However, you can upgrade that a little bit larger if needed by replacing this flange. I think that uh, the flange is offered in two or three inch configurations. SPD series pumps have a maximum head of 65 feet and a maximum capacity of 140 gallons per minute. The preferred operating range of the SPD 100 shown here is between 21 and 43 feet. The maximum solids handling of this particular pump is three quarters of an inch, and the motor speed on this pump is 3450 RPM. With this particular pump, it's offered in both a single seal and double seal configuration, and features in both configurations a carbon ceramic type seal. The SPD series is available from one half horsepower up to one horsepower. 10 foot cord length is standard, and a 20 foot cord length is optional. The SPD series pumps are offered in both automatic and manual configurations. The manual configuration, of course, comes with no switch, and the automatic configuration is available in both a diaphragm type switch and a wide angle type switch. The automatic option on these pumps is limited to single phase. The maximum liquid temperature of this pump is 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And lastly, today we're gonna to take a look at the Aranko PF series pumps which is quite a bit different looking than the other pumps we have on the table. The body construction on this pump is stainless steel as well as an engineered thermoplastic. This pump features a floating stack impeller type inside the pump end here, and the impeller construction is a silicon acyl copolymer or Neural GFN3, essentially a plastic and glass composite that is both flexible, tough, and heat resistant. The Aranko series pumps are actually capable of upwards of 850 foot of maximum head, so that's where they get their name, high head effluent pump, and actually have a cap maximum capacity upwards of 100 gallons per minute, so still capable of producing quite a bit of volume. The preferred operating range of these pumps is plus or minus 30% of the rated flow on the curve. The Renko PF series pumps offer an inch and a quarter discharge as standard. Once you get up to the 50 gallon a minute series, however, it ups to a two inch discharge. These high head effluent pumps have a maximum solids handling capability of 3 16 of an inch. And this little screen that you see here is um, gonna help you achieve that and prevent the pump from sucking up anything that is larger than that. The submersible motors featured on the Aranko PF Series pump are a 3450 submersible well pump motor, super reliable, super tough. These motors feature a Kingsbury type thrust bearing, which enables the motor to take quite a bit of force. The PF Series pumps are offered from one half horsepower all the way through five horsepower. The cord lengths on these pumps are available in 10, 20, 30, and 50 foot lengths. The Aranko series pumps are going to need a control panel for operation and are not offered in an automatic configuration, though the lower horsepower configurations could potentially be operated with a single float switch. So we took a look at a few different effluent pumps here to get you familiar with some of the options and construction materials that are available in the industry. Of course, there's tons more options and tons more types of pumps available uh, for effluent pumping. So the best thing to do again, uh, familiarize yourself with the particulars of your application and then look for a pump that's going to be well suited to fit your needs. Again, if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service team. We're more than happy to take your call or email. I want to thank you for watching this video today. Make sure if you enjoyed the video to like and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.